Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we're going to be talking about John MacArthur and his continuing to platform woke preachers. And this is, in my view, a blatant contradiction to him being one of the initial signers of the Dallas Statement on Social Justice and the Gospel. I think it is a complete contradiction to be one of the initial signers of the Dallas Statement and then continue to platform woke preachers. I think that is a contradiction. I believe that this contradiction needs to be remedied. That is the purpose of this video. So with that said, I want to make two things clear. I'm not a MacArthur bro. I don't believe that John MacArthur can do no wrong. You know, I'm not just a fanboy or anything like that. You know, Evangelical Dark Web is not here to simp for celebrity Christians. We're not here to do that. Uh... That being said, I do got to respect his record. This guy has done ministry longer and has achieved a greater deal of fame and had a better result than pretty much anyone still alive today. Uh, that I just you know don't see another person who ranks as high on that list. R.C. Sproul's died a few years ago, and we're really feeling the loss of that. With that said, I am also not a Julie Royce. Julie Royce is someone who stirs up controversy because she hates the church and she opposes sound doctrine. That is Julie Royce. And she has a vendetta against John MacArthur because he's a man and he's powerful, so to speak, and he's in ministry. That is Julie Royce. She is a hypocrite. Uh, she had a quasi lesbian relationship with a former student that she was ministering to so she's a complete hypocrite in everything that she says that she stands for and got canceled from her own conference because of it pretty hilarious story that i covered earlier this year but nonetheless i just wanted to preface this video with those two comments so with that said let's just dive into the meat of this video but before we do that don't forget to like the video also subscribe to the channel help us out with those magical youtube algorithms so this is kind of what set off a lot of this controversy is uh dr ligon duncan with us today at master seminary and this is a pretty odd instance because Ligon Duncan is extremely woke. Uh, Ligon Duncan, the who's uh, basically the head at Reformed Theological Seminary, a major Presbyterian seminary that don't that is, to my knowledge, not associated with the PCA, but very PCA adjacent, very large seminary, very influential seminary. So. That's who Lincoln Duncan is, and Lincoln Duncan is extremely woke. I remember when this was a huge topic uh, two years ago, uh, and that hasn't changed. And there's no reason to believe that Lincoln Duncan has changed on being woke. So the question remains is, why is he being platformed by Master's Seminary? This is a concern to many John MacArthur followers, and... What I've seen in reaction to this is you got people like uh, Capstone Report basically saying it's a Dallas Statement dead. Like I think Capstone Report might be dooming on the Dallas Statement. I believe that you know we can gently call for correction on this issue. However, what other discernment ministries, uh, Protestia and Dissenter, uh, just to name some names, haven't specifically addressed is that the issue goes deeper than just Lig and Duncan continuing this or having a surprising, and by surprising, we like we didn't know about this before, surprisingly is teaching at Master Seminary. It does go deeper than that. Uh, Lig and Duncan is also going to be a featured headliner at the Pastors Conference. So the Pastors Conference is a conference that is at Grace Community Church. This is John MacArthur's conference. And as you can see, we have a couple problematic names on this list. You got Ligon Duncan in the top right corner, but next to him on the left is John Piper. John Piper is also woke. So Ligon Duncan, I'll, I'll show you the receipts on his wokeness in a second, um, but John Piper is also woke. And he, he went woke back in 2016 and continued to be woke 
through 2020. And we can also say that Kevin DeYoung is a questionable guy, but I, I'm still under the impression that Kevin DeYoung is one of the more, uh, one of the good guys in Big Eva. That's just my impression of him. Uh, I used to think the same of Denny Burke, but I'm a little bit questioning that when he decided to obfuscate, uh, and no, not obfuscate. He decided to pervert God's justice on the issue of abortion. So I take issue with Denny Burke over that. Uh, but as far as like, you know, one of the good guys in Big Eva, as far as I can tell, Kevin DeYoung is still on that list. Uh, as is John MacArthur, in my opinion. But John Piper, I don't, you know, I'm not sure whether John Piper is a false teacher or not, but high amount of red flags uh, without going over that threshold. And then Ligon Duncan is obviously woke. I would be more comfortable saying that he might be a false teacher, but I haven't researched him in depth specifically. So let's just show some more receipts. This is the Puritans, the Puritans conference. Uh, and the goal of this conference is exploring the rich legacy of our Puritan heritage and you can see that you know we got john MacArthur as a headliner obviously because it's his church john piper and ligon duncan and again i just take issues with both these guys are woke so let's just talk uh ligon duncan first and we have this uh viral video this was from uh it says december of, of 2020 uh i thought it was a little bit earlier than that maybe it came out in like november i believe but, you know, this came from the As in Heaven pro podcast where Ligon Duncan is basically saying how his friendships with black people are marred by racism and that black people cannot trust him because people that look like him did things to people that look like them generations prior. And it's, you know, it's a concept that I call Assassin's Creed racism where he just continually has like this ancestral racism passed down and ancestral guilt passed down through genetic lineage. So um, that's what Ligon Duncan was expressing. And that's not the only instance of him being woke. I do believe that he wrote the foreword or introduction on a couple woke books as well. Uh, and it's, it's cringe. It, it truly was a cringy moment with his experience on the As in Heaven podcast, which was a Gospel Coalition podcast that came out uh, two years ago. So that's that's the receipts on Ligon Duncan, and I'll put that in the description. And here's the receipts on John Piper being woke. And this dates back to uh, 2016. Uh, November 2016 is when he wrote this. Interestingly enough, its proximity to the election is when he wrote this. And he says that racism is an explicit feeling or belief or practice that values one race over the other races and devalues race. And then uh, he states that racism as a noun refers to a person who is characterized by racism without hate, without hating, renouncing and seeking to eliminate his own racist attitudes and actions and the harmful effects on them. The implication is that while everyone as sinful and self-centered by nature is tainted with racist tendencies, not everyone should be labeled racist. And you start to see that John Piper has a lot of uh, underlying premises of critical race theory adopted into his own writing, specifically that racism is normative and that ra that you don't have to be, uh, there can be racism without racist. And he says that uh, structural racism is the cumulative effect of racist feelings, beliefs, and practices that become embodied and expressed in the policies, rules, regulations, procedures, expectations, norms, assumptions, guidelines, plans, strategies, objectives, practices, Values, standards, narratives, histories, records, and the like, which accordingly disadvantage in the devalued race and privilege the valued race. Implicit in this definition is the important fact that structural racism, therefore, may have its racist effects even if non-racist people now inhabit the institutions where the racist structures still hold sway. So John Piper is pretty woke. He believes that there can be racism without actual racist. 
That's like saying there can be communism without actual communist. That doesn't happen. There can't be Nazism without actual Nazis. Uh, it, it's absurd. So that was in 2016. In 2020, he wrote, uh, I believe, a two-part article uh, about critical race theory in the church. And he basically tries to argue that no one actually is teaching critical race theory in the church. And again, it is a cringe article. And this is while he's justifying voting for Joe Biden at the same time. Um, and his critiques of critical theory are entirely generic because he's really just criticizing materialism. So, uh, Again, this is two years that I'm trying to recall here, but this is my article on whether I think John Piper is a false teacher. But in doing so, I do great length discussing the issue of whether John Piper is woke. And John Piper most certainly is woke. He most certainly is. So with that said, with that said, I want to finish off by saying John I, I want John Piper to enforce the Dallas statement stop um, platforming woke preachers Ligon Duncan's woke John Piper is woke enforce the Dallas statement and you know that's how we move on from this we don't need to reinvent uh, you know John Piper, if John Piper won't sign it, if Ligon Duncan won't sign it, if there's no actual sign of repentance from teaching woke ideology, then we should not be platforming these people. Their compromise is not tolerable in this environment. It just isn't. So that's what I want to accomplish with this video. I want John MacArthur to enforce the Dallas statement, just like I want John MacArthur to also enforce a Frankfurt statement or a Frankfurt declaration, which we, he was an initial signer on. John MacArthur has done great work in his ministry and him being the initial signer of very important faith statements is great work and it's great leadership. But I want to see the leadership in statements Followed up with leadership in action, even if it means picking fights with friends. You know, I noticed that Al Mohler's not at this conference. And I also noticed that, you know, how many of these people stuck up for John, uh, John MacArthur when he opened his church? So that being said, that's my goal for this video. It's not to hate on John MacArthur, but it is to advocate correction. So that's all I got to say about that. My name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. If you really like this kind of content, you can support evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join. Uh, you can become a Patreon-like subscriber for as little as $5 a month. We don't use Patreon because they censor. So we're smarter than that. So anyway, have a blessed day. Let me know what you think about what I think in the comments section. And I will catch you on the next one.